Okay, we are rolling. We are rolling, brother. Champions of Champions Boxing Talk here. Well, um, it was a good fight, wasn't it? Luke Campbell v Lomachenko. Did Was I surprised? Well, I predicted Luke Campbell would be stopped the latest rounds. He went the distance. The judges had it wide for Lomachenko, but the cards really didn't tell the whole story. It was kind of like a football match where a team loses 3-1 and, and the game was a lot more closer than a 3-1 line scoreline in a football match. Um, Luke Campbell did some damaging work to Lomachenko's body. So much so, in the second half of the fight, I felt Lomachenko's legs had slowed down. And I felt, when Lomachenko dropped Luke Campbell with a you know, some good body work himself, and then a shot up top, again, that classic variation that Lomachenko has. When Luke Campbell raised to the ground, after, I think, the eight count, Lomachenko darted in, and Luke Campbell nailed him to the body, and Lomachenko didn't want no more. He didn't want to finish Luke Campbell off. He thought, right, I've got a 10-8 round uh, score here in this particular section of the fight. I'm happy with that. Live to, you know, li don't don't have the pain, live to fight another day. You know what I mean? Um, Luke Campbell fought very well. I thought he buzzed Lomachenko when he caught him with a really good, I think it was short, right hand real close on the inside. And I think it buzzed Lomachenko. Luke Campbell went for the kill himself. And then Lomachenko being the champion he is, he reversed it and hurt Campbell. But the size, I think, did matter. The size made it more competitive. Lomachenko has the edge on everything. And I've said this before because he's so much better, even though I think Luke Campbell is one of the best in the world, to not be world champion, right? Because Lomachenko is so much better, he wins. But the day he fights somebody, Luke Campbell's size who is on Lomachenko's level, Lomachenko will lose. Right? Didn't I say that about Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather in some of these videos? When you meet a man that's on your level, but bigger than you, you lose. Now, when you're fighting a bigger man that's, you know, worse than you, you can still lose just to the size alone. But when you've got the advantages in so many areas... You can win when you can switch better than they can, when you've got better footwork, better hand speed, better ring IQ. You can win, and you generally do win. But still, just because they've got that size and just because it's an extra five pound, they've got an extra power. You know, it hurts when a man like Luke Campbell hits a guy so small like Lomachenko to the body. When he hits him on the chin, he feels it a bit more. When's the last time the Linares shot looked... Like a glancing blow on Lomachenko. And he got up and weathered, you know, not even really a storm. Even though it was a competitive fight. But he was genuinely hurt against Luke Campbell. That was the difference. He was generally hurt. And again, all credit to Luke Campbell. He, he is high level stuff. He reminds me, if this guy doesn't ever win a world title, he reminds me of Steve Bruce. You know, the centre-half for Manchester United when United were near their peak. He was one of the best centre-halves in the country, but never got a cap for England. He's one of the best players to never play international football. That would be Luke Campbell in boxing if he didn't win a world title. He'd be one of the best, at least in his division, UK fighters, never to win a world title. I hope he can come back from here and finally get a chance and make that breakthrough to a world title. Because on that display, he deserved it. Good jab, good size. Used his distance well, I thought. Kept Lomachenko sort of backed up early. But of course, Lomachenko, again, once he figures that data out, he started to get closer, land some body shots himself. I knew it would be a, a fight of body shots. You know, I just didn't think Campbell would be able, with his height to sort of reach down and land as much body shots on the smaller guy as he actually did. And he did again slow Lomachenko down. That's why Lomachenko couldn't finish the fight. The gas tank was punched out of him. 
But credit to Lomachenko for fighting in the UK uh, out of his comfort zone. And despite being hurt to the body, right, which he was, but Lomachenko was a warrior, right? You wouldn't think if, you see, because we know Lomachenko, he generally does look at times superhuman. But against Campbell, he looked human, right? But a fantastic human. But if you'd never watched him before, and that was the first fight you watched, you'd see a small, smallish guy doing very well beating a bigger guy, and you'd think, this guy's awesome. And look, look at the determination of him. Even when you hit him to the body, even when you hit him on the chin and he looks stunned, he comes back, drops the guy, and still wins. So you have to give credit to Lomachenko. There's a lot of people saying, oh, he's not the fighter they made him out to be. <sighs> what did they make him out to be? You have to be, you have to be very careful listening to these broadcasters. You know, after all, they're trying to sell their fighters to the public and make pay-per-view numbers. I've heard all sorts from Lomachenko, from people saying he's the greatest fighter since Sugar Ray Robinson. That, you know, he's better than Muhammad Ali, he's better than Roy Jones Jr., he's better than Floyd Mayweather, he's better than Manny Pacquiao. I really don't get into those equations. Because all of those guys, to me, so far are ahead of Lomachenko. They've just done more as pros. I'm not talking about the amateurs, I'm talking about as a professional. Those guys have done more. But that doesn't mean to say that I won't be putting Lomachenko as a great fighter, an all-time great fighter. Maybe just below some of those real historical guys. You know, Darren Barker said something at the end of the fight that... <laughs> this guy, you know, we used to think Sugar Ray Robinson was the greatest fighter ever. We might have to reconsider that now. They're getting carried away. But again, I'm not getting angry at Lomachenko for that. I'm getting angry at the broadcasters for that. Sugar Ray Robinson is a different level. We know that. All boxing people know that really deep down. But Lomachenko, for his time, is extraordinary. And he's done exceptional feats himself. You know, he's only won. He's only had 15 fights. And he's a champion in three weight classes. That is unprecedented. Don't forget that. And what was he world champion after his, you know couple of fights he went for a world title on his day on his second fight you know even even going the distance with Salido, a, a world champion you know on your second fight that is crazy and that is to be commended whether you win or lose that makes you something else right but anyway on to the nitty-gritty there's a lot of fans calling for the match out there you know you know pound for pound fighters fighting each other and one particular one, and I'm going to be brutally honest in this assessment right now. I'm a Lomachenko fan. I've said that. I'm also a fan of the guy who they're all calling for him to fight. And who, you know, in terms of foot speed and footwork and all of that stuff, is, you know, brilliant also. <laughs> Some of the boxing public are calling for Lomachenko Manny Pacquiao. Now... The Manny Pacquiao is now with Al Heyman, so that might be an issue, right? Just the promoters thing. We know how the politics go. Manny Pacquiao is usually a much smaller guy fighting the likes of Keith Furman, Miguel Cotto, Margarito, Lucas Matisse, and any number of welterweights you care to mention. Manny Pacquiao is usually the smaller guy who is dropping... Sometimes with single punches, sometimes with combinations, welterweights. This is really a lightweight who is dropping welterweights. And when he is getting into physical exchanges with welterweights, he is physically holding his own against some of the best welterweights in the world, right? At 40 years of age, he just beat... Possibly the third best welterweight on the planet in Keith Furman. Keith Furman has never been beaten. Never. Right? Keith Furman hits extremely hard. Keith Furman is physically strong. Right? So Pacquiao is the smaller guy against all of those guys by a good distance. Maybe by at least nearly two weight classes. The problem Lomachenko faces, and as I said, Campbell managed to bridge the gap 
against Lomachenko just with his size and reach. Pacquiao going into the Lomachenko fight would enter the ring as the bigger man. Not only the bigger man, but a, a, a really, really ferocious puncher. Did anybody remember Manny Pacquiao's power in the lower weights? It looks bad for welterweights when he hits them. He drops them, as I've just said. He could ice Lomachenko. If Luke Campbell is hurting you to the body, if Luke Campbell is physically making you tired, if Luke Campbell has buzzed you to the chin, what do we think Manny Pacquiao does? Ricky Hatton was never beaten at 140 pounds. That's five pounds heavier than Lomachenko has ever fought at. Manny Pacquiao iced him in the second round. I know that was prime Pacquiao, but the last thing to go is the punch, and that was shown in the Keith Furman fight. Of the two fighters, again, it's all rel you know, it's relativity talking. Pacquiao ended up the puncher out of Furman and himself, and Keith Furman was billed as one time. But Pacquiao is at least equal, if not a bigger puncher than Keith Furman. Can anybody imagine, just imagine Keith Furman punching a 135 pounder? It would look bad. Well, Pacquiao has the power of a welterweight. Think about that. He had, Mar you know, he had Antonio Margarito hurt to the body. A 154 pounder. Lomachenko was hurt to the body by Luke Campbell, who is a world-class fighter, but his power is not like Manny's. I don't think Luke Campbell, if he hit a welterweight clean on the chin, drops them. Not a welterweight in the top 10. Pacquiao drops top 10 welterweights time and time again. Mr. Chin, let's face it, who is known as Mr. Chin? He's not known as Mr. Activity, but he's certainly known as Mr. Chin, Adrian Broner. Pacquiao sent that guy across the ring when he landed that left hook. And he had even Adrian Broner rocking. Marcus Madonna couldn't stop Adrian Broner. Right? So, Pacquiao goes in there, the bigger man, which is rare for him. Pacquiao, let's not forget this, his punch resistance. Was anybody as surprised? Because I was. That Manny Pacquiao at age 40 could be hit by Keith Furman and absorb that punch very well. I was surprised. I shouldn't be, but I was a little surprised. I thought Pacquiao would be constantly avoiding Keith Furman's right hand. But when Keith Furman landed, Manny Pacquiao took it. And Keith Furman, again, is a hard puncher. Lomachenko hits Manny. Luke Campbell takes a lot of Lomachenko's punches. Manny Pacquiao could take Lomachenko's punch. So he could potentially... You could have a scenario where he walks through Lomachenko, where he doesn't even worry about the skills. He walks through him. Physically, he can outmuscle him. He's bigger. Lomachenko's power is not Manny's power. Pacquiao... Did you not see him nearly fold over Keith Furman with body shots? What would he do to Lomachenko's body? He could break Lomachenko apart. Lomachenko could probably be in there competing for four or five rounds and then there might be a point where he can bust. And that's what I think would happen. Here's another thing. Lomachenko might not have many where, places to go, sorry. You know why? Pacquiao's speed is comparable with his. Pacquiao's feet are comparable with his. Pacquiao, when the fight slows down, when Lomachenko, the smaller guy, loses some speed because he's trying to keep up with a bigger guy, Pacquiao could end up the faster guy. Pacquiao is one of the few 
whose speed can sort of stand the race with Lomachenko. He might be slightly behind early in terms of speed because Lomachenko is smaller, but Lomachenko lands a couple of punches which Pacquiao can absorb, then Manny comes back with one. That's going to hurt Lomachenko more than Lomachenko hitting Manny with two. And then as he slows down and takes body punches, he's there for Manny's mercy. Right? Bob Arum has poured cold water, put the fire out on a potential Pacquiao-Lomachenko fight. Now, I heard all sorts of stories that Lomachenko did not want to fight Manny Pacquiao because he respected him as a veteran. And he didn't want to hit an old man and all of this stuff. Let me tell you something. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. They've looked at Pacquiao. They've seen him drop Jesse Vargas. They've seen him hurt Keith Furman, drop Keith Furman. They've seen him drop Timothy Bradley in the third fight. Yes, he's getting old, but he still punches. And he's still, you know, quick. And he's still got a lot of experience against top guys, big and small, that have helped refine that boxing IQ. Right? They didn't want Lomachenko going in there because Kell Brook, at the time when he faced Gennady Golovkin, had a lot more skill than David Lemieux and some other middleweights that Golovkin had faced. But those middleweights, though they still lost to Golovkin, did better than Kell Brook in the long term. Kell Brook made a fantastic start, but he got broke to pieces. They don't want that happening to Lomachenko. Manny Pacquiao could break Lomachenko and damage him. And then you'd end up with a scenario where you've got Lomachenko, who is not the same fighter because of a brutal fight. See, Lomachenko's talking about fighting Tank Davis who is again a weight class below what Lomachenko fought last night, right? Can we imagine Tank Davis running into Manny Pacquiao? Honestly. I think he'd get obliterated. Not because he's not good, not because he's not potentially great. Pacquiao, for the first time against these guys in a long time, would have the size, power and strength advantage. And as I've said, I can't stress it enough. He hurt once one of the biggest welterweights we've seen in Antonio Margarito. Look at the state of the guy. Can you imagine Lomachenko there? Yes, Lomachenko could, you know, parry and use feints and use head movement to avoid some of the shots. But if Luke Campbell is landing on you and Manny Pacquiao is a accurate puncher, Luke Campbell is good, but Manny Pacquiao is still better in my view. Than Luke Campbell. Pound for pound he's better. Right? Different level. Different power. Different strength. When you... If you even buzz manage, you think he's backing off. No, he's not. He could make it a very messy fight for Lomachenko. And a fight... That I don't think for one moment... Bob Arum wants. Or Lomachenko wants. All that stuff about he doesn't want to fight an old man. It is nonsense. He doesn't want to fight Manny Pacquiao. That's what he's saying. Freddie Roach said. All that throwing the ball against the wall. And all these moves and dancing. They don't prepare you for Manny Pacquiao. Because Manny Pacquiao. He's a good mover. Right. He's a good mover. Lomachenko cannot just hit and move. He can hit, but when he moves, the bigger target is on his heels. Breathing down his neck, that is pressure. And he's a body puncher Pacquiao now. He's a head hunter. 
He's a boxer. He's two-handed. Don't forget, Keith Furman was dropped, not by a left, a right. So Lomachenko switches. He can go wherever he wants. He still faces the power either angle. Pacquiao fights at strange angles. Might Pacquiao's angles put Lomachenko off? Think about that. Right? Kell Brook was never the same again after the Golovkin fight. He went into the Errol Spence fight and history repeated itself. Another eye was damaged. Can you imagine Pacquiao doing this damage to Lomachenko? Wouldn't that set it up nicely for Tank if they ever fought for Tank Davis? I don't think Aaron wants that. I don't think Lomachenko wants that. We want it as... Well, we would like to see the fight as fight fans to the, the, the top 10 pound for pound. But I'm under no illusions. Even before the fight with Luke Campbell, I said that Pacquiao would break Lomachenko apart. As good as Lomachenko is... Pacquiao's size and strength and power would count if they were to square off. Lomachenko will have faced no power like it. He'd have faced no skill like it, let's face it. He'd have faced no speed like it. Pacquiao has fought Morales. Let's just talk about skill level. Morales, Barrera, Marquez, Mayweather... Cotto, these are five very skillful fighters. So Pacquiao is prepared and is under no illusions when he faces a guy with skill. But Lomachenko, he could get iced by Manny Pacquiao. Either iced or broken badly down just with strength, speed and size alone. Pacquiao, to me, would be frightening if he was a bigger guy against a smaller opponent. He is shocking when he's the smaller guy. you got to put this in your pipe and smoke it. Because that's just the way I see it. This is, again is taking nothing away from Lomachenko. But the Campbell fight reminded me a little bit... Of the... When Roman Gonzalez was climbing the weights. It was getting harder. You could see he was still winning. But he was looking a bit more human. And then, boom. The explosion. And he lost his first fight. Knocked out in devastating fashion. Lomachenko. The very max he could compete at. You know against Progress. And Taylor, for instance. At 140 pounds. I think Lomachenko could lose to one of them. You can see that the strain is getting a little bit heavy. You know? It's like running with no bricks in the sack on your back. And then putting the bricks on your back and trying to run up the same hill. It gets a little harder every time until eventually the limits kick in. And you collapse with exhaustion. Not because you're not a good runner or a good athlete. Because of gravity. I think the gravity of Manny Pacquiao beats Lomachenko in a brutal manner. Unfortunately. Right? I think Progre and Josh Taylor give Lomachenko £140 just because they're bigger. Some real issues. Maybe even give him his second defeat. Because Progress is extremely skillful too. If his skill isn't working... See, this is it. Pacquiao and Progress, people like that. If their skills are not working against Lamonchenko, they can sell out. Just go for the punch. Just go for the strength. Just go to overwhelm. Just go to overpower. Just clinch. Take the air out of the smaller guy. They have those options. Lamonchenko can't do that with them. Free weight classes, and I can already see... It was a dominant win over Campbell, but Campbell had his moments. We're not used to seeing anybody have moments with Lomachenko. We're used to seeing him literally make them quit. And why they quit? Because they felt it. <laughs> they felt the high tech. But Campbell was able to survive, and not only survive, 
answer a few questions himself. If he's doing that, I know styles make fights, but it was the power that was hurting Lomachenko to the body. What do you think Manny Pacquiao would do? Leave it in the comment section. I'm under no illusions if this fight happens. And Bob Arum is under no illusions. Despite what they say, oh, Manny's an old man. We want to leave him alone. Oh, Manny's a Heyman fighter and we don't want to go over there. No, no, no. What they're saying is we didn't fight. We, we could have had the fight in the top rank stable when they were both there. But there was a reason it never happened. Didn't Lomachenko's uh, management say that it, it would be insane for him to fight Terence Crawford? So if they think it's insane in fighting Terence Crawford, who is more a skilled slickster, is it not crazy fighting Manny Pacquiao, who comes and boxes in sections, but he still has that moment where he wants to destroy? Of course it's crazy. They're just not saying it. And another thing, this would be that last night was sold out. Lomachenko, Luke Campbell. <laughs> You're telling me that Pacquiao wouldn't be Lomachenko's biggest ever payday? Of course it would. If they felt they had a chance and Lomachenko wouldn't get busted up, they would have took that fight. There's too much money in it. But I'm afraid the danger outweighs the payday. But again, Lomachenko is a great. He's going to be an all-time great. He is, but I just think Pacquiao being the bigger man <laughs> for once gives Lomachenko more than he can handle. Anyway, this is Champions of Champions Boxing Talk. I'm out, brother.